how to make $100 a day freelancing. We talk a lot about this on the channel in terms of making money online. We've talked about how to make $100 a day doing YouTube recently. We talked about how to make $100 a day in passive income. But I think freelancing is actually faster than both of those things and is probably more realistic for those of you who are just getting into this and don't have any kind of following or don't have a lot of experience. So today I wanna to talk about how you can start earning $100 a day and put yourself on the path to becoming a full-time freelancer. This is something I actually had to learn for myself the hard way when I first got started. So. Let's jump into the video. Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake helping you create something awesome today. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about freelancing and we're gonna to talk to you about how you can make $100 a day freelancing. So we're gonna cover a few things. We're gonna cover where you're gonna find your freelance clients. We're gonna cover how much to charge so that you can get to a place where you're averaging about $100 a day or at least maybe close to $3,000 a month. And we're gonna talk about some of the you know, different skills that you would need in order to actually pull this off because you do need some creative ability or technical ability in order to be able to produce the amount of value that's gonna be there for somebody to pay you enough money to do this full time. So if you wanna be a full time freelancer, understand, this is not gonna happen overnight. I keep saying it, there's no such thing as overnight success. But if you're willing to do a couple of core things, work at this, you can put yourself in a position to make more money than you are right now by just knowing a few things that maybe nobody bothered to tell you. So let's start with breaking down the $100 a day math here. You may not be able to be a full-time freelancer right now. You might be working a nine to five job and so you might only have some time on your nights and weekends to do freelancing and that's okay. We just need to make sure you're using that time effectively. It's not about like losing sleep. Everybody wants to talk about this whole thing with the hustler culture and people telling you not to sleep. I've never heard a legitimate entrepreneur tell you to not sleep or to go down to like four hours a night. Nobody says that. What I have heard is use the time that you're awake more effectively. And I think that that's good advice for any goal that you want to achieve in life. It's about being intentional as all hell and making the most of what you have where you are right now. So let's say you're in that nine to five position. Great, I was too. What I used to do on my you know, weekends was I used to actually do photography. I used to shoot weddings. I used to shoot you know, headshots. And you know, this is a $500 camera. I obviously have more expensive ones now, but I had something similar to this in order to start out with. This is the Canon M50. This is often the beginner YouTuber's camera. And you'd be surprised what this is capable of in the right hands if you know what you're doing. Now, when you have you know a relatively inexpensive camera like that, it's very hard to specifically get decent paying wedding gigs, but you probably can do something for people who are on a tight budget and it can help you make extra money. Now, you may not have a camera at all, so that's not really gonna be the focus of this. I'm just telling you a personal story of something that I did when I was getting started because that's something I had an interest in. And if you already are kind of double dipping as a content creator, while you're trying to make that first $100 in YouTube like I talked about in my other video, I'm gonna to link to it up here and in the description down below. Uh, if you're already using a camera like this to try to make it on YouTube, you might as well go ahead and take advantage of the time you're not making videos and try and use this to make a few extra bucks by either shooting commercials or something for a local small business, helping somebody set up, you know, who has a small business or is an entrepreneur set up something for their website or even for them to start making YouTube content as well. You could shoot and edit for them or you could get, again, try to do models, wedding photography, shoot headshots for business people, etc. Now, part of the reason I brought this up is it's an easy and straightforward way for somebody to understand the value of what you bring to the table. They may not have a camera and they may not know how to use one. And that's really the gap here. In order to be able to make $100 a day or $3,000 a month, you're going to need to be able to provide value for someone that they can't provide for themselves or you're gonna to have to make it convenient for them. And that means that you have to spend the time that you have. If you don't already have some of these skills, you're gonna to need to spend the next maybe 30 or 60 days developing a reasonable amount of skill to be able to produce something of value for people. 
See, a lot of people won't tell you that. The good news is you can learn a lot of these skills online, either affordably or for free. Now, I'm not selling you on some online course, but I am gonna recommend you check out Skillshare. Skillshare is not sponsoring this video. I know they sponsor all the YouTube videos. Hey, Skillshare, sponsor my videos. But what I will say is sign up for a free trial, use my link down below, and check out a lot of their free online courses. And if you can afford to pay for it after your trial is over, then use that opportunity to pay just a few bucks, like pay like $12 a month, but learn skills that allow you to charge $100 for something, $200 for something, $500 for something, and then be able to create that value, build up skills, and then deliver value for people. But Roberto, how do I find clients? I don't have an audience. I don't have people in YouTube or Twitter. I don't have a following. You can't do anything without a following. Look, that's a load of crap. People have been making money online without massive followings for time immemorial. Social media is relatively new. Freelancing is not. Side hustles are not. Um, you know, direct to consumer business is not. Service based businesses are nothing new. This is an old game that existed before people had follower accounts. Networking is the key. And one of the reasons you're struggling is because you only are talking to people who are in the exact same financial situation as you. You need to expand your reach, you need to expand your horizons, and you need to get out of your comfort zone. Now, I know a lot of you have your feelings about Facebook and you don't like it. Maybe you deleted Facebook. That was a mistake. It is a significant opportunity for you to become part of online business groups for small business owners, entrepreneurs, or people in specific niches that have disposable income. It may feel like the world is coming to an end, but guess what? The PlayStation 5, like, sold out in terms of pre-orders, the um, like NVIDIA um, graphics card, the 380, like that sold out. Apparently people still have disposable income. So it's your opportunity to get a cut of that. And if you wanna do that, I highly recommend looking at Facebook and LinkedIn. Update your LinkedIn profile, make it very much tied to the skills that you have. I've made an entire video uh, that tells you why you might be doing LinkedIn wrong. I'm gonna link to it up here. But also get involved with these Facebook groups. Look at people who want to hire talent and don't know anybody in their own network who can provide what they need. Guess what? That's an opportunity for you. Obviously, you can go to a lot of these freelance websites in the gig economy. Upwork is a very popular one. Fiverr is more popular than ever, and it's probably the biggest one, the most well-known one, and it's where people go when they need to outsource work. Me and my team, uh, Team Roberto, we've actually outsourced to both of these platforms before. Uh, I do have some of my own criticisms about Fiverr, but ultimately, it is the most convenient option out there. And in terms of you getting started as a freelancer, it's the most accessible option and the easiest one for you to use and be approved of. With Upwork, you may not get approved into the program, so that opportunity may not be realistic for you. And there are other freelance platforms out there. They're just not as heavily trafficked. And so you may not be able to find the opportunities that best suit your skills and your level of ability. So let's focus on the concept of Fiverr. You need to try to look at what opportunities exist where you're not gonna get paid a measly $5. You need to be shooting for tasks where it's something that you know you can accomplish in a day that won't take you all day that you can charge $100 for. And you need to consider, well, what's my $100 skill set? And then what's my $500 skill set? What can I deliver on for $100 that I know I'm good at? And what can I knock out of the park for $500. And this becomes important because if you're only doing $100, you either have to be able to do a task once a day or even multiple times a day to try to hit this full time status. But if you have a $500 skill set and a $500 offering, then that means you only have to hit that six times in a month to make your $3,000. So again, if you want to go full time, this is what you need to be shooting for. That's how the math works out. Now, when it comes to opportunities that allow for this, um, again, graphic design is good, but a lot of people don't value it enough sometimes. So you'll have to actually be very good at it in order to make that kind of money. Web design, higher tier skill set, especially if you can do something template wise. If you're good at setting up blogs, like things with WordPress, then that's gonna be helpful. Or setting up websites for Kajabi to help people sell their online course or their online business. Uh, I would find the platforms 
where people actually have to spend money on the hosting because those people have disposable income. And so their issue isn't, oh, I don't have money. Their issue is, oh, I don't have time. Okay. So you need to look at that. Uh, for my online coaching business, Awesome Creator Academy, we use Kajabi. Uh, for those of you who want to do membership websites or online courses, highly recommend it. I'm going to link to it down below. Um, a lot of people for their regular website, they do what I do. They use Bluehost and they set up WordPress blog. And if you're going to try to market yourself as a freelancer, you're probably going to need to set up a WordPress website yourself. Uh, if you don't want to learn code and WordPress, you might want to set up Squarespace. So I'm going to link to some options for you to build your own website down below. You can use Squarespace, Bluehost with WordPress, one-click installs, or you can use Wix.com. Those kind of things will make it easy for you to have your own website so you're not beholden to platforms like Fiverr exclusively and you can still pursue your own opportunities. You're also gonna want this because you need a body of work and a portfolio, which I'll get to a little bit later. So definitely gonna need and want a website here. And it's relatively affordable. When it comes to finding clients, I recommend that if you find clients, whether you're doing web design, graphic design, marketing, anything at all, really, if you look at people who are paying for something like Kajabi, they have disposable income and because they're selling courses or a membership, they have a revenue source so they can afford to pay what you're asking. Go after those more affluent clients. Remember, the reason you might be struggling right now as a freelancer is your immediate circle are usually people that are in the same financial situation as you. You need to go ahead and you need to broaden your horizons and go beyond that immediate circle, go outside your comfort zone. Now, in order to land those clients, you're gonna to need to be able to show results. Now, if you're new to freelancing, if you're a new freelancer, you might have to actually do some free work to build a portfolio. And that means that in terms of those people that you're already closest to that don't have a lot of money, you do work for them for free or for very cheap just so you can have results and you can have testimonials. That way you can ask for more money from people who can actually afford it. We get paid in proportion to the perceived value of whatever we create. That's how it works. So once you have a body of work, once you have a few testimonials, once you have a few referrals, you're in a position to start charging more and to go after those larger clients. And like I said, look for someone who clearly has a budget. That's the key here. And just because you're on something like Fiverr or Upwork and it looks like, well, oh, there's an abundance of these low tier jobs, it doesn't mean you have to pitch for those jobs or take those opportunities. Go ahead and look at what is paying more. Just put yourself in a position to justify going after it and then make sure you're absolutely delivering so that you get good reviews and good ratings and you build a good reputation. More work will follow. At some point, I'm thinking of doing a video about the best paying gigs on Fiverr. If you're interested in something like that, let me know in the comments. Also, let's go ahead and get this video up to 1500 likes and that will just make sure that I make that video a little bit sooner. So go ahead and take care of that now and subscribe if you haven't already. So my final thoughts on becoming a full-time freelancer and making $100 a day comes down to the fact that you need to look at your time and you need to allocate time to finding new clients, learning new skills, building your portfolio, and then actually getting the work done and deliver. And you're not gonna be able to do that all at once at the same time. So you need to be patient and you need to work through this process. But once you get through this process, you're gonna be in a better position. And the thing is you can end up making more than $100 a day if you play your cards right. And if your patient. Discipline, consistency, and patience are the secret to success. It's not really a secret. It's the same way you get washboard abs. So that is kind of the advice that I have for you here. Put yourself in a position to be valuable to the market. Look at what people want and what they need. Put yourself in a position to deliver for them. And then make sure that you're just making, looking at the all the options, looking at all the opportunities available to you, and then skilling up, making sure that you're in a position to create real results and then put those results on display. Also break down the math. If you don't think something's worth your time, then fine, pursue what is and concentrate your effort there where you're gonna get the most value for you out of your effort. Just make sure that you're not deciding that effort is exactly the same as value. It's really not. It has to produce something. It has to produce results. And for you, I would say that the th priority for you is results that earn you more money, especially during this time. Question of the day. 
how much money have you made as a freelancer? Like what's the most you've been able to uh, make in a month as a freelancer? Let me know in the comment section. Also, I think this is gonna be inspiration. This is gonna be a ton of inspo for other people on the channel. Speaking of inspiration, um, inspo, I post to Instagram pretty much daily, so make sure you're following me over there if you need a little bit of motivation so you can be more disciplined, consistent, and a little bit more patient. Uh, definitely appreciate seeing you guys engage over there. And also, make sure you're checking out the other videos on this channel in terms of making money online if that's something you're trying to do right now. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out all the awesome stuff here on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching. And don't forget, go out there and create something awesome today with whatever you happen to have. Take care.